guys, Amy Gibson here. I thought it'd be fun today to give you a little video with some visual demonstrations since our block this month has some raw edge applique and that's a technique that we haven't really used before in the sugar block club. Um, so I thought I'd give you a few tips and tricks and little shortcuts to make it painless and fun and easy. This is our block this month. It's the orange blossom inspired by the orange peel classic traditional quilt style. So we're using these fun little petals. We're going to be sticking them on um, with some double-sided fusible web and then just stitching around the edge here with a zigzag stitch to secure that raw edge. It's super easy. Um, Double-sided fusible web is available at any fabric store. Your local quilt shop will most definitely have it. You can buy it on the bolt, um, cut it just like you would yardage. You can also buy it in these little pre-cut packages like this. Um, this one is by a company called Steam -a Seam 2, and this is the double stick fusible web. I just started working with this and it actually makes this process super easy. It comes on these sheets like this, so they're already kind of pre-cut and they're really printer friendly. One side has these graph lines on it, it's kind of papery. The other side is waxy. This isn't exactly eight and a half by 11. Um, it's, it was a little bit too big for my printer. It's more like nine inches by 12. So I went ahead and cut it down eight and a half by 11 so I could stick it right into my printer. And I put it in so that the paper side with the graph lines was down so that I knew my, my templates would print on that paper side. So I printed them right onto to this sheet. Now, if, you're, if you don't want to work with these specific pre-cut sheets and you just already have some double-sided fusible at home that you want to use, you can simply just cut out one of each of the template A and the template B and just trace around on your fusible with a pencil. You're going to need four of each shape, the big petal and the small petal. But if you use these pre-cut ones, I put four right on the page for you, so it's really easy. You can go ahead and use that. And what you're going to do is cut out your individual pieces like this since I have different colors for the different sizes of the petals right and then what you do is you just peel off this backing right here and it's sticky on the back so I can just take it to my fabric right here I have the wrong side of the fabric I want to use on this petal for template A and it just sticks right on here and then what I can do is go ahead and cut this out with my rotary cutter and then give it a little press with my iron and the piece, the web will go ahead and stick to the wrong side of my fabric. And then I'll have these little guys right here. So the webbing is stuck. We still have the paper on there. And what you can do then to go ahead and peel off the web so that you can adhere this to your block. You can either start at the edge with your fingernail and kind of try to peel it off. Or what I like to do is just take a little straight pin and kind of just um, score a little tear in the side to kind of get it going right in the middle. And then it's a lot easier to just sort of rip the paper off there. And you'll feel it's kind of gummy, it's sticky. Um, that's what I love about this double stick. It's sticky on both sides, so it'll, it'll stick to your, to your fabric. And then you'll go ahead and, and arrange it. Um, let me take you over to my machine and I'm going to give you some tips on how we're going to kind of line these pieces up to make sure they're nice and, and straight on your block. And then I'm going to give you some tips on how to stitch around in a really quick and painless way that you only have to back tack and secure your stitches at the very beginning and the very end for the entire piece. So let me show you that in just a second. All right, so you're starting out with an eight and a half inch square of your background fabric here. Mine is white. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch the four smaller petals on first and then once we get all of those stitched on then we're going to come back in a second step and add the larger petals and stitch those so you kind of do it in two different groupings the smaller petals first and what i started by doing was taking the eight and a half inch square and folding it into quarters and then pressing it so that when i open it up i have some nice clear center markings along all four sides and I can see exactly where the center is. That makes it really simple when I take my little petals and I start to arrange them. You want all of your starting little petals to touch right in the center and then you're just going to use these little 
uh, center markings along the sides um, to align all of the, the outer tips of the petals too. You'll get these all in place and then press it. They'll be permanently fused. And then all we need to do is come in and just stitch these edges. So let me take you in close and I'm gonna give you some tips on how we can stitch this entire piece with just one seam, never stopping or starting. So I'll take you to that. And we'll get All stitching. Right, so I'm I'm at my machine here and I have my zigzag stitch set to um, a width and a length that I'm happy with. I suggest testing this out on a scrap. Mine right now, the length is a two and the width is a two and a half, but um, there's definitely no right or wrong. You can experiment and see kind of what look you're comfortable with. I'm starting here in the middle on the right side of one of the petals. And my machine has a, a fix setting where I can go ahead and secure kind of like a back tack. So I'm gonna go ahead and back tack right here at the very center. And I'm using red thread just so you can see it, but you could use matching thread if you want to. And what I'm doing here is then just stitching my zigzag I'm gonna widen it just a little bit to a three, three wide. So I'm stitching here and when my needle goes down in its right hand position, it's barely off of the petal, it's on the white fabric. Almost all of the stitch is on the petal and just the very right hand side is touching the white. And sometimes that takes a little bit of practice and if you kind of mess up and you go more onto the white or more onto the pink. It's okay. It's only really obvious when you're using a really contrasting thread like this, but I'm just gonna stitch down so you can kind of see how this comes together. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm ending at the very tip with my needle in the right hand position. My needle is staying down, so I can go ahead and turn my piece here. I'm gonna do one little stitch to the left, one more to the right, so I'm at the very tip. And then with the needle down, I can go ahead and turn my piece, and then I know that my next direction, it's gonna be going to the left, so my next stitch is gonna be continuing right on my pedal here. I'm not gonna kind of go out onto the white, so if you can kind of remember to anticipate if your next stitch is right or left, you can sort of make sure that you're staying on the pedal the whole time. And then what you can do, instead of stopping when you get to the end of this pedal here and back tacking again, so then you'll have all these starts and stops right in the middle, because of this pretty flower shape that we're doing here, what we can do is just continue on right through the center and do this next petal right next to it in the same pass. I'm gonna speed up a little here. I'll probably do this more carefully if I wasn't trying to do it kind of fast just to show you. So same thing. And we just kind of continue this process all the way around. I'm ending with my needle down in the right hand position, turn it, and then just keep on stitching. It's really kind of magic, and you'll see that you come down here, and you're just going to run right onto, let me get this thread out of the way, onto the very next petal here. See, if I go right across the center, oh, and now I'm onto the next petal. You just continue that all the way around, and then you will have one continuous seam. And when you kind of take a look at your finished block here, let me cut this guy. You can see how pretty this is gonna turn out and how you don't have a lot of business in the center. It's not a lot of securing. I did this in one pass all the way through. After you get the small little guys on here, you're just gonna attach the big petals like this. And we don't really need to fold and press it like we, we did before. What we can do is just line the centers up like this and just kind of look at the corner to make sure that the tip is just pointing right out evenly at your corner. Uh, align all these guys on and stitch them in the same exact way. Take a photo, post on Instagram, hashtag sugarblockclub. I wanna see what you guys are stitching up this month.